uh, 5090 O level biology November 16 paper 1 to question 23 to 40 is being uh, discussed in this video. Uh, so we start with question 23. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now we start off with question 23. Now this has again been mentioned in the examiner's report uh, that they were able to interpret this graph and students were able to interpret this graph. So a person is sitting in a dark room. darkened room after 5 seconds a light is turned on the pupil will become smaller 5 seconds after that the light is turned off again so you got to understand something happens between 5 seconds 10 seconds first he is sitting in a dark room so the pupils will be larger now i always tell you when you're doing a graph just write some figures on the side 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 so sort of you written this here you written this here and this is the pupil diameter and arbitrary units now why was the answer you say say the pupil size was 5 then when the light was switched on at 5 seconds when the light was switched on at 5 seconds so then the pupil size would decrease and then it would remain smaller say this was this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 and this is 5 so it was 5 mm and then it went down to 3 mm it stayed 3 mm for 5 seconds and then it went back to 5 mm so this is how you have to understand this question i don't want you to just memorize and say okay well this was the answer no 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 please understand it a person sitting in a dark room pupil size is larger then after 5 seconds light is turned on so after 5 seconds this pupil size must decrease so from 5 it has come to 3 and then stays 3 for 4 seconds and then on 10 seconds we have again switched off turn the light off so again it will return to the 5 mm uh, diameter of the pupil so this was why the answer was a and all the other answers are incorrect because you have to figure this out between the 5 and the 15 seconds then coming to question number 24 nerve impulses in neurons can travel number 1 away from the central nervous system towards the central nervous system and within the central nervous system in which direction do impulses in sensory and relay neurons travel in sensory neurons they travel towards the central nervous system and the relay neuron they travel within the central nervous system so that's why the answer to this was d and of course if you understand it the central nervous system sensory sensory and relay and motor neurons only then you could understand this question question 25 which is an antibiotic a chemical produced by a fungus that kills bacteria important thing is that antibiotics kill b biotic b bacteria if you want to remember it by this method so antibiotics kill bacteria so anywhere where it was viruses that was wrong and a chemical produced by the human body that kills bacteria that's antibodies which are uh, produced by the human body antibiotics are not produced by the human body please understand that then question 26 a new organism is discovered it contains dna in a cellular structure to which group of organisms could it belong and to which group it could not belong so not belong has to be virus viruses are non cellular they're not even a cell the cell is a unit of life it has to have a cell membrane it has to have cytoplasm it has to have organelles in it virus has nothing in it so could belong to bacteria why because it has a cellular structure and contains dna a new organism is discussed to which could it belong to which group it could not belong so this is basically a question on microorganisms the diagram shows an industrial fermenter gases out sterile air in nutrients in stirrer stirrer paddle ring of air outlets cooling water in cooling water out so the cooling water goes in here goes all around it and then of course it is replenished because this water will become warm so more cool water will come in and then there's a product out there's a gas out there's a sterile air in and all that now what is the question on it why is sterile air essential for the microorganisms in the fermenter well of course why is it essential is to provide the oxygen 
And by sterile layer, because no other microorganisms should come in, we don't want any other bacteria or fungus to grow, which is present in there. We only want the specific microorganism which we've added to grow in it. And so they've asked you that it's a fermenter. So you're going to add some fungus to grow in it, like penicillium. And that's going to give you penicillin. But in the air, if it's not sterile, it's going to contain a whole lot of other microorganisms which we don't want to grow. So it's got to be sterile. It's going to pass through a filter. Question number 28. Which statement is correct for the flow of energy through an ecosystem? All organisms lose energy from metabolic processes to the environment. Flow of energy. Now this is again, a, if you look at the syllabus, it's the non-cyclical nature of energy flow. I can exactly tell you which syllabus point they are examining. Non-cyclic nature of energy flow. So all organisms lose. What is correct for the flow of energy in an ecosystem? So if you remember the syllabus, the syllabus points, it helps you to understand which question they are asking you. Nine, the diagram shows a pyramid of biomass. Which percentage of biomass is passed from primary consumer? So lettuce has to be the producer. Primary consumer has to be the caterpillar. Primary consumer. And then of course, Robin has to be the secondary consumer. Secondary consumer. So how much, which percentage of biomass is passed? So 120 divided by 600 into 200 would give you 20%. It shows a pyramid of biomass. How much is the mass from the producers was 1200 gram per meter square. The caterpillars was 600 gram and the robin was 120 grams and then the sparrow hawk was 12 grams. So this is how they calculated the 20% and that was the answer. Then question 30 is mentioned again here in the in the examiner's report. There's confusion between the term nitrification and nitrogen fixation. In which process is atmospheric nitrogen absorbed in root nodules and combined with other compounds? That's nitrogen fixation. Can't be anything else. Root nodules was all about nitrogen fixing bacteria and the root nodules of leguminous plants. Then coming on to question number 31, how many times must an uninfected mosquito feed on human blood to transmit the malarial parasite in the human population? At least twice. I have malaria. So first the mosquito has to suck my blood. And then of course the plasmodium multiplies in its stomach. And then it has to suck the blood of another person and then it's going to transfer the plasmodium because the plasmodium from the stomach of the mosquito migrates to the salivary glands of the mosquito. And it sort of injects the saliva. You can say spits into you, but injects the saliva. And that is when it passes the plasmodium from this one person to another person. So at least twice. Then question 32, why does the oxygen concentration area decrease when sewage is discharged into it? When sewage is thrown into it, it's a lot of decomposing matter. So the bacterial number increases and the bacterial respiration uses up the oxygen. It's the bacteria which increase so much in number that they respire and they use up the oxygen in the water. And that's when the fish start to die. So more the biochemical oxygen demand, the BOD, more the pollution it is, more it is polluted. Because as now there is a lot of dead decomposing matter so the bacteria now have a lot of food available. So they multiply very rapidly. From say 1 million, they go up to 100 million. And then they are going to use up the oxygen in the water for the process of aerobic respiration. So there is an increase in the number of bacteria. Then 33, the diagram shows the development of a pollen tube and its entry into the ovule. Which part develops into the testa after fertilization? So fertilization is going to take place inside the ovule. And then the outer area is going to, which is the C part, is going to develop into the testa of the seed. You see, you've got to remember there's the testa, which is the seed coat. And this is the hilum where it was attached. And then inside this, there is this radical 
which is a leaf-like structure, and then there's a there is sorry, this is the plumule, not the radical. Plumule, then radical, and then you have the cotyledons. So this is all the cotyledons. This will be the radical. This will be the plumule. But what we're talking about is the testa, which is the outer covering. So this testa is this part, which is the outside the ovule, is the part which is going to develop into the testa. In 34, the diagram shows a broad bean seedling. And then you can see this is the seed part, and then this is the root developing down here. And then we've got this part, which is the shoot developing here. Now it says from which part of the seed did structure X develop? It developed from the plumule. So the plumule becomes a shoot. And R radical, R root. Testa, nothing becomes of it. Cotyledon of the food stores are used up. 35. The diagram shows part of the male reproductive and urinary system. What is X? Well, X is the urethra, but let's do the other labeling. This is the testes. This is the sperm duct. Or the vas deferens. The two names to it. And then, of course, we have to understand this is the ureter. And that's the bladder. And then here where it connects it, where the, the you, you can see how the sperm duct, now look at the sperm duct. The sperm duct is shown like this. It's curling around it and here it comes and joins the, the urethra. And the organ that surrounds it, that's the prostate gland. And that is why when the prostate gland enlarges, the person has difficulty in urinating. The man has difficulty in urinating if the prostate gland is enlarged and is pressing on the urethra. So that is also come in a question in one of your paper twos. Then coming on to question number 36, what are the functions of the amniotic sac and the amniotic fluid? Protect the fetus from physical shock and allow the fetus to move freely. So basically it is the function of the amniotic sac and the amniotic fluid in which the fetus can move around very easily. And of course it also prevents acts as a shock absorber. Just like if you, like when I travel, I have bought something which is very fragile and I uh, wrap it in a bubble wrap so that it just prevents it from breaking by the time I've reached home. So question 37, which process is used to produce insulin commercially? Which process is used to produce insulin commercially? Inserting the human insulin gene into a bacterium. All the rest, rest was all just rubbish. Extracting glycogen from the liver, rubbish. Extracting insulin from the pancreas of human volunteers. No, you can't do that. Inserting a bacterial gene into persons. Oh my God. So that was all wrong. And you can see it and find out how, how glaringly wrong it is. Question 38. The inheritance of ABO blood groups depends on the three alleles, IA, IB, and IO. What are the possible genotypes of the person of blood group A? Now, that was the only possible answer is AA and AO. No other answer was correct. Then coming to question 39 and 40, both of them have been discussed in the exam report. It says two heterozygous individuals are crossed. So heterozygous means this. Now the possibilities are there's this possibility, there's this possibility, there's this possibility, and there is the possibility of both being homozygous recessive. Now what is the probability that one of these offspring that show the recessive characteristic, this shows the recessive characteristics, is homozygous? It's 100%. It's 100% because small a, small a is homozygous recessive. And that is the only one. What is the chance that it will show the, the recessive characters? Like, for instance, these are white rabbits. And these are all black rabbits. So now it is saying, what is the probability that the one of these white rabbits that show the recessive is homozygous? Well, it has to be. It's 100% one. It can't be anything else. The recessive trait 
when it is showing the phenotype of the recessive characteristic, then it has to be homozygous recessive. Now, this has again been mentioned that, you know, uh, individuals with the recessive phenotype must be homozygous probability and students usually selected B, 0.25%, which was wrong. They were thinking if they selected this, then this was wrong because they are thinking of this 0.25 probability. They are not understanding the question. They didn't read the question carefully. The wording of the question was slightly unusual and the most popular answer even among some of the stronger candidates was B. Then coming to question number 40, which is the last question. Coming to question 40, uh, which is the last question, the diagram shows a pair of chromosomes from the same cell and they've labeled some portions of the chromosome and labeled it P. What do the lines labeled P point to? Again mentioned in the examiner's report, the question on genes and alleles exposed an area of confused understanding for many candidates. Now, the answer to this was the site of genes made up of two or more alleles which might be different. Could be the same, could be different. This could be big A and this could be big A. But this could also be big A, small a. Or it could be, also it could be both small a's. So there are all these possibilities. What do the lines labeled P point to? The site of genes made of two or more alleles which might be different. So they could be, both of these here could be A, A, could be A, small a, and could be small a, small a. So the site of genes made of two or more alleles which might be different, like in, in blood group, we have three alleles, I, A, I, B, and I, O. So there could be any two of these. So it's not going to sell it two or, that's why they said two or more alleles, which might be different. So that ends this paper and I hope this has been helpful for all of you. And uh, thank you for watching. If you've been watching my videos, uh, thank you very much.